Hi and welcome to Panels R Us. I'm Greg and today I'm going to be taking you through an overview of LED panels. What they are, sizes, what they physically look like, uh, the spacing on LED panels, what the P numbers refer to, connectivity, how you connect them, and also a quick look at controllers, physical mounting, and other bits as we go along. Probably the most common panel used in DIY Christmas lighting is the P10. This is an example of a P10 panel. As you can see, the 10 in the P10, in fact the, the number in the P numbers, refers to the number of millimetres between centres on the pixels. So this is a P10, pixels are spaced at 10 millimetres both vertically and horizontally. Here on this particular panel, and this is the standard size, we have 16 tall by 32 pixels wide for a total of 512 pixels. And as you can see, if I hold it against the ruler, there we go, it's starting at number 50 there and running up to 82. So 32 centimeters or 320 mil wide, as reflects the 32 pixels across. This uh, P10 is, is a standard one, so it's an RGB uh, setup, each LED being RGB uh, capable. The next common panel that you'll find is the P5. And exactly as the name suggests, we have pixels at a five millimeter spacing, both vertically and horizontally. This gives us, in this case, 32 pixels tall, so double the P10, and 64 wide, so again double. And that gives us four times the number of pixels, so 2,048 pixels on a standard P5 versus the 512 on a P10. Now if I spin them around, you can see uh, the connectivity is identical. Uh, the, all the standard panels use what's called an IDC16, an insulation displacement connector, with 16 pins. So 16 pins uh, on both. We then have a four pin power cable. So the panels all come uh, with a power cable, one per two panels because they're a Y cable. And they take five volts. So regardless of type, the panels all run at five volts. So there's your standard P5 and P10. I'll just flip back. These, of course, can be daisy chained, so we get data in here at J in and data out from J out, which then moves on to the next panel. These are the most common types used. Uh, they're indoor panels, so they are not water resistant at all, uh, and are in their native state are not suitable for going outside. But a simple frame with a sheet of perspex over the top and away you go. Uh, do the same for the back, obviously, because of the electronics. Now it is possible, and we do have what's called outdoor panels. So here we go, here's an outdoor P5. As you can see, physical dimensions are the same. Uh, the LEDs themselves are a bit bigger, um, and they are a lot brighter. These outdoor panels are designed to be used in daylight outside which means they draw a lot more power than the indoor ones and they're a lot brighter now that is not great for us in the christmas and uh, holiday lighting industry because our displays are traditionally run after dark or at least from twilight onwards so we don't need the extra power that the outdoor ones offer. In fact, we get greater resolution of the low ones because we can lower the brightness down in a greater number of steps, well, in the same number of steps, but from a brighter start, to, from a, we can, we've got more control over the darker panel 
for the type of lighting environment that we're working in, i.e. after twilight. Now the other thing to bear in mind is these waterproof or the outdoor panels are water resistant at the front but they still have the electronics visible and accessible at the back. Now it's designed to have a waterproof membrane that's installed here and if you purchase them you will get the waterproof membrane. So you'd need something like a painted surface, uh, a flat surface with holes in it obviously for your plugs um, to then bolt these two for the membrane to squish against uh, to achieve a water resistance. I, I don't think that is the right answer for the DIY world which is why I generally pitch the indoor panel and recommend that you build a, a frame with a perspex or glass front to put them in. Now, as well as the standard types here, we've got the standard sizes types here. Be aware that there are some oddball uh, units around as well, particularly places like eBay. So this one um, I purchased online and I thought I was getting a P10. I didn't actually read the description properly. I just read 16 pixels by 32. Didn't realize it was a P6 panel until it turned up and I thought, my goodness, that box is small. Opened it up and there is a P6. Exactly the same number of pixels as the P10, but just in a footprint two thirds the size. Spin it over and it's got the same number of connectors, same type of connectors. So we've got the same power, the same data in and out, just in a smaller footprint. Now that might be useful. This is an Adafruit example. Um, others I'm sure are available. As well as the RGB panels, it is also possible to get panels in just a single color. This panel came again from eBay. Uh, and this, as you can see, is an all red panel. It is literally 512 red LEDs. The connectivity is very similar. We've got power, in this case there's a terminal connector there, data in, data out, much the same. But it is only red, so you can only do red writing on that one. So let's talk about physically mounting the devices. So the P5 panel here, on the reverse you can see that we have six mounting points. So these are M3 holes and the panels themselves come with magnetic mounts so that you could park the frame, park the panel onto a metal frame. We've got some just here, there we go, there's a, an example of a mount. So these screw straight in, you get four of them per panel so they screw in like so and they have a little magnet that goes in this hole and then one on each corner and they clip onto the metallic object that you're looking for. Alternatives to that, if you're just building a small display and you don't need to go to the complex or want to go to the complexity of welding up a metal frame for it all, uh, and not all of us have got welding gear, myself included, then we offer an alternative in the form of our plastic mounts here, like this one. So these are designed to, uh, we've got little lugs, they're designed to fit onto the panel and they come supplied with screws and bolts and bolts. So you can just join them together and create your little matrix uh, quite happily with that. Now, moving on to connectivity, as you can see we've got a data in and a data out. So these are designed to be connected in chains of up to eight panels. Now dependent on the controller, uh, that number may vary. Uh, the maximum, the biggest controller that we do, the color light, will support eight chains of up to eight panels or up to 64 on one card. And it is possible then with the color lights to daisy chain cards. So you could have hundreds of panels in a single display if you wanted to. Let's just bring that out. So here is, a, here is an example of the color light card. As you can see, we've got eight data outs, each capable of driving the eight panels. 
So this has power, again it needs 5 volts, and it has data in via an Ethernet socket. So these can be driven by either a PC with a gigabit Ethernet card, or by one of the newer Raspberry Pis. So you need a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus or a Raspberry Pi 4, such as this one, which has a gigabit Ethernet. Now the 3B Plus will run FPP or Falcon Pi Player just fine. Output the results of Pi Player via Ethernet to the color light, which then runs the panels. Now that is the optimum way of doing things. It's the, the best possible quality because the hardware on the color light card uh, will decode the signal in the best possible manner and get it out to the cards and get it out yet yeah, to the panels. So that's the optimal for a big display. So anything much bigger than a, a four by four, so 16 panels, something like that, I would definitely recommend a color light. For smaller matrix, um, such as a tune to sign or something similar, or just a smaller, maybe a three by five or a three by three uh, matrix, you can go for one of the smaller add-on cards uh, which are available. Now we have a couple of them. Uh, we have three or four different types in the, in the store. So this one is a Hanson Electronics board for a Raspberry Pi. So it's got the 40 way connector on there and it just literally sits on top of the Pi and then you can plug your panels directly in. So here we've got a, an IDC cable, so you literally plug it into there and then into the data in on the panel, give them both five volts and away you go. The Pi isn't the best device um, for that, um, not quite as quick as we'd like, but if you already have a Pi and you want to get into it, it's a good way to go and it'll happily run a small number of panels. Another option we have is uh, again from Hanson Electronics in Australia, the Optus Scroller. So this one as you can see will run up to eight strings. Uh, the Pi one as I just looked at will only run three. This one runs up to eight strings. And this is a kelp called a cape, which sits on top of a big or bone black uh, small computer. So much like the Pi, that will sit on top of there. And then you could put the whole thing in your case uh, with the panels and away you go. An alternative for that one with a slightly smaller footprint comes from Dan Culp in the States. Um, and this is Dan's pocket scroller which is designed to go on a pocket beagle, which is an even smaller microcontroller. And that just sits on there. And this one gives you six outputs. Uh, again, so six strings of panels. So you've got a number of different options dependent on your preferred flavor of single board computer. Your pocket beagle, your full size beagle bone black, your Raspberry Pi, or if you want to go with the big boys, the color light. Now connectivity between the panels, when you get the panels, they come with the four magnetic mounts, one for each corner. Uh, they come with a power cable and they also come with a very small data cable. Now this data cable is just long enough to join two panels together. Now these two are, are slightly different types, but the, the logic is the same. So we just connect the two like that. And there you go, you've daisy chained two panels. And depending on how you're connected, you may then need a longer cable, which are available in the store, to connect back to your controller. So this one is an 80 centimeter one. Uh, we go up to one meter off the shelf, uh, or we can do a custom length if that suits anything We've tested up to seven meters in length and that worked fine. So if you've got anything, any longer requirements than that, then give us a call and we'll talk you through 
it might be better that you have two colour lights instead um, to keep the data closer together and reduce the risk of magnetic interference. So that sums up my quick overview of panels. So we've got P5s, P10s, we've got indoors, we've got outdoors, uh, we've gone through the spacing, um, a very quick look at connectivity and some of the controller options that are out there. If you've got any questions, do drop me an email or drop me a message on Facebook. Um, email greg at panelsrus.co.uk. Let me know and, uh, and we'll come back to you with a suggestion or a solution. Have fun, take care and see you soon.